If you wiggle electrons hard enough, you get a laser, and not just any laser. Free electron lasers lie at the junction of particle physics and high power optics, and they are the most flexible lasers in the world. Invented in 1960, lasers permeate everyday life. They exist in checkout counters, cat toys, Blu-ray readers, and more. The first laser devices were flashlamp pumped ruby lasers, and they were distinguished by their deep red color with a wavelength of 694 nanometers. Since then, laser technology has exploded, but a fundamental limitation of the technology places strict limitations on them. Namely, for a given laser material, the number of possible colors that it can produce are quite few. For standard semiconductor-based lasers like those found in electronics, they can only produce one color. Changing the color requires a completely different semiconductor. Even the most sophisticated gas lasers might only produce six to seven different wavelengths, often clustered around one hue. But free electron lasers are, quite literally, built different. Unlike their atomic and molecular cousins, the wavelength of light produced by free electron lasers is not dependent on transition energies in bound electron structures. As the name implies, in an FEL, the electrons are free, and they operate on entirely novel principles. First, you need a particle accelerator to produce a beam of electrons going near the speed of light. That beam is then shot through a long tube flanked on either side by oppositely oriented magnets. Because electrons are charged, these magnets cause them to wiggle up and down as they fly down the tube. But an interesting thing happens when electrons are forced to change directions. They emit bremsstrahlung, also called braking radiation. The faster they turn, the higher energy, i.e. shorter, bluer wavelength light that they emit. And this is the secret of the FEL. Electrons can emit light just by changing the direction of their motion. So by adjusting the speed of the electrons and the strength of the magnets, the wavelength of light can be smoothly changed from the deep infrared all the way to the x-ray part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is where the flexibility comes from. Now if this was all that happened, it wouldn't be a laser, just a burst of light. A laser must be coherent, meaning that the peaks of all the light waves have to overlap in time and space. However, because light is just an electromagnetic phenomenon, the light produced can apply a force to the negatively charged electrons. In particular, the electric piece of the electromagnetic wave forces the electrons to spatially clump up into microbunches, separated by a distance of exactly one wavelength. This results in coherent emission of light. All of the electrons emit their radiation in sync. And so there you have it, free electron lasers.